I recently finished reading a book that I actually started reading a few years ago and never actually finished. And then this year I made a point of actually finishing the book because it has been recommended by so many people and so many sources as being one of the really good reads if you do want to work on establishing habits and actually sticking to habits. And the book's name is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it is really a great book. This video is not going to be a book review. Um, I do recommend you go read the book if you do want to um, establish, you know, habits that last and that you can sustain and do throughout. But the main takeaway of the book, and that's in the name as well as Atomic Habits, meaning that small changes actually make the or lead to a big result. And we often think we need to do these drastic, crazy things to get to the goal that we want to achieve. And that might be true in some cases, but in most cases, especially when it comes to health, diet, lifestyle and fitness, it is really the small consistent changes that we make that will have the big impact on the, at the end of the day. So today I want to talk about five things, small little tips that you can implement to make it easier for you to stay in a calorie deficit or to get into a calorie deficit. Before we start, just a short introduction. Hello, my name is Melissa Nell. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm part of the Body20 Nutrition Doctor team. Very welcome here if you're new. We do these videos every two weeks, so please follow along. Let us know if you have any questions. You're also welcome to recommend any topics if you have anything that you want us to talk about in these videos. Um, and we will, of course, get back to you. You can send it via WhatsApp or email. So back to the video. So the five tips that I want to talk about specifically to help you get into and stay in an, a calorie deficit is before we do that let's talk about calorie deficit calorie deficit is super important if you want to lose fat right that is our foundation the fundamental of losing fat yes there is certain other things that play a role when it comes to losing fat like your hormones your sleep your stress and so forth but we need to start with calorie deficit or energy balance, right? So if we consume less energy than what we burn, the body needs to find the energy somewhere else and that is through the reserves, which is our fat reserves, and therefore leading to that weight loss that we want to achieve. So if your goal is to lose fat, you definitely need to be in a calorie deficit. And so this is why I'm talking about these five simple things that you can implement hopefully today already and uh, to help you stay in a calorie deficit. So the very first tip is actually a very obvious tip and that is to increase your energy expenditure. Now, the easiest way for me to say is just go exercise or just go run a marathon or whatever. And yes, that is also true. But I think we need to think about smaller little things that we can do every day that is just in general gonna increase your energy expenditure, um, even if it just is a slight amount. So I recommend definitely increasing your step count every day. As far as possible. So if you can, I think it's great, especially if you are someone that sits in front of a desk, I mean, at a desk, in front of a computer every day, is to maybe look at investing a little bit in a standing desk where you will already be moving a lot more while you are working because you're not just sitting and then go one step even further and maybe get one of those walking pads where you can actually walk on the same spot while you are working because then you're going to increase your step count quite significantly if you walking it doesn't need to be the whole day but that already will help with just increasing your energy expenditure and your step count and blood flow and all of the good stuff if that is not an option for you i do recommend small little things where you can take the stairs park a little bit further so that you have to walk a little bit further if you're going to the shops or to work or whatever the case may be and then, of course, trying to incorporate a bit of movement and exercise in your day to day routine and over the weekends, even if it is just going for a walk um, around the block or at a nature reserve or whatever it might be. So the very first tip, very obvious tip is to increase your energy expenditure because that will help with the energy deficit. The second tip is to increase your fiber in your diet. Now, fiber is great for many other reasons health wise but specifically for energy deficit we see fiber is actually very beneficial because it makes you feel fuller for longer because it adds that bulk to the meal so that helps us therefore to eat smaller portions and also to eat less um, frequently at the end of the day because you feel a little bit more fuller for longer the other reason why you feel a bit fuller for longer and tend to eat less frequently is because it helps manage the blood sugar levels because we see that when you're having foods that's higher in fiber, it is a little bit harder for the body to metabolize and break down and release the sugar into the bloodstream, 
which therefore leads to a slower release of the sugar into the bloodstream, which leads to a more controlled blood sugar level throughout the day and not the up and down spikes, therefore making you feel a little bit fuller for longer, having more sustained energy and not those highs and lows during the day. Because unfortunately, the highs and the lows can often lead to cravings for sugar or sweet things because you feel tired or you feel that craving or your body is trying to get your sugar levels up again. Another benefit of fiber, we see that high fiber foods often is seen that their calorie content isn't completely absorbed. So we see with almonds, for example, only 80% of the calories actually get absorbed. Whereas with sugar, for example, 100% gets absorbed. So you do get away with a little bit of murder when it comes to eating high fiber foods. So make sure if you are buying a cereal or a cracker or bread or something off the shelf that has a nutritional label, look at the dietary fiber content. It should be more than six grams per 100 gram of that product. If there's alternative options, maybe look at them and see if you can't find the one that has the higher fiber content. And then of course we know fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, um, like chickpeas and lentils, and then of course your whole grains are typically higher in fiber. The next tip is to prioritize protein. So protein is super important, especially for milk building muscle. Uh, just a side note, if you have been recommended by a healthcare practitioner to avoid or lower protein, then this maybe is not for you. But in general, if it is safe for you to consume protein, I do recommend that you prioritize it in every single meal and snack. The reason why I say this is we see with protein, it helps with building muscle. So together with your body 20 sessions and or any other exercise that you're doing, you are breaking down the muscle and then adding protein in your diet we will rebuild the muscle stronger, leading to a higher lean body mass in the body. And we've seen with research that this increases the metabolism and we all want a faster metabolism. So that is your answer. The more protein you have in your body in terms of muscle, the faster your metabolism, the higher your energy expenditure will be by just being, for example. So then it won't necessarily, you won't necessarily need to exercise that hard because you already have a higher metabolic rate. So it's easier to maintain your weight at the end of the day. The no another nice thing about protein is we see that protein actually has a higher thermic effect of food, meaning that when we eat food, there is of course um, the metabolism happening that requires energy and releases heat in the body. And we see protein has the highest thermic effect of food leading to the fact that protein actually requires more energy to burn than, for example, carbohydrates and fats. So definitely prioritize protein, but on that note, don't overdo it. Please still stick within the ranges and also stick to your leaner types of protein where possible, because we don't want to do overdo it with the fat and then just increase the calorie content like that. So it's just a balance that we need to strike. The third tip, the, no, sorry, fourth tip that I want to talk about, Lee, is very similar to the one with fibers, where we want to actually increase the volume of foods that are low in calories. So this is typically things like your vegetables and the salad and fruit, where they have a very big volume. Think of a salad as a really a big amount of food, but very little calories, leading to you having that feeling of getting full. Because if you think of the stomach, it's basically the size of your fist, which is tiny thinking about the amount of food that we often put in it. Um, but it actually, when it expands, there's receptors on the, on the stomach that actually signals the brain, okay, I'm full, stop eating. So when you're eating something like salad or veggies, that's, you know, again, high in fiber, that's bulkier with lower calories, it often makes you feel a little bit fuller quicker and also for longer, leading you to decrease your protein, I mean, your, sorry, your portion, um, intake of, for example, proteins and carbohydrates and fats. Even though you still need those foods, please don't take it that I'm saying that you should avoid it. It just helps you to manage your portion sizes if you do end up struggling with managing your portion sizes. And the last tip that I want to talk about is something that I think a lot of people forget about, and it's those sneaky little things that come in and we kind of think, oh, it's fine, or we just kind of rub it off, but it actually definitely makes a difference at the end of the day. And that is your calorie containing condiments that we forget about. So we often quite in a habit of just adding, you know, tomato sauce to your food. If you're having eggs in the morning, for example, or, you know, a chutney or a sauce or something like that, it's quite, easy when we're cooking just to add it for some extra flavor or whatever it might be. And we kind of forget that those things often contain quite a ton of calories. 
and sugar and fat and sometimes a lot of other things that we don't need. So be careful with the sources that you consume. If you're at a restaurant, always ask for the sauce on the side. If you're at home, you have a lot more control over what you use. And I do recommend going for the natural options, like for example, your spices and herbs, and also then things like lemon juice or vinegars, and um, you know, those, those options that don't contain much calories. And if you are going to buy a sauce, again, look at a lower calorie option. I mean, we have such, we spoiled with choice. So, so really experiment with a few sources and, and compare them with each other and then use it sparingly, you know, because it's still gonna add um, those calories at the end of the day. So if you can go without it, wonderful. If you can't look for an alternative that is a bit lower in calories. So that's it from me today. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you can implement these five tips and then also do recommend going and reading this book when you have some time. And then I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.